Hi there, and welcome to our Planet Zoo education experience. I'm Elle, and I'm one of the community managers here at Frontier. And today we're at Shepworth Wildlife Park, so we can learn a little bit about some of the animals that are coming to you in the Planet Zoo Wetlands Animal Pack. Right now, we are looking at the Asian small clawed otter, which I'm sure you can hear behind me. You've handed me this stick, yep. and I believe you use this for health checks? Yes, so training for animals shouldn't be about uh, trying to just make them do tricks or something that you think is fun. Um, so we do it in order to health check them. Um, for this, uh, we can put it in and they will touch their nose to this end. And way, that way we can see that they're moving properly. You'll see they'll jump up when you put the stick in. Let me give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> and so you use a clicker? Yep. So this is what we call a bridge or bridging stimulus. And it helps to um, let the animal know what they're doing is right. <laughs> so you can see little May here hasn't quite worked out what she's doing. Is she one of the youngest? She is. She's one of the little babies. So she <laughs> still thinks she has to grab hold of the stick rather than put her nose to it. Is that what they use the other side for? Yes. Let me flip around and we can give that a try. So you can see they'll grab <laughs> oh, hold of that end. <laughs> so while they're doing this, we can see their tummies, we can see their paws really nicely, we can see their faces and check they haven't got any injuries, they're moving really nicely and nothing's wrong. So this is one of the common ways you feed them to keep them enriched? Yes. And exactly. what are we feeding them? Um, today they have got some sprats and some shrimp but we'll also give them bigger fish like haddock sometimes. They'll get mussels, uh, razor clams when we can get them, and also crabs occasionally. Is this similar to what they would eat in the wild? Yeah, so they mainly fish and crustaceans. Um, these guys are really, really tactile, so you can probably see they're doing a lot of things with their hands. Um, they love to sort of move things around, and we do give them lots of things to play with that they can sort of rummage around in. Um, and in the wild, they would be um, looking around at the bottom of rivers, streams, lakes, um, for things like crustaceans and little fish. They're so cute. Yeah, I, I love them. So <laughs> <laughs> this is the smallest species of otter, right? It is, yes. So there's 13 species. These guys are the smallest. Uh, some of the biggest ones, the uh, giant river otters can get over a metre. Oh, wow. Massive animals. Quite the difference from these little guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> these guys we can safely kind of go in with. Um, they do get a little bit excited sometimes, but they're perfectly okay. Those guys you would not be able to go in with. No, the biggest mm. threat to these guys, I believe, is to your wellies. Yes. <laughs> Our wellies are no longer waterproof because of these guys. <laughs> they're so cute, though. You've got to forgive them. I do. I do. <laughs> you know, every animal has some things that sometimes are a little bit awkward, but you love them anyway. So is this kind of a normal family size for them to live in? Yeah, so um, they can get up to about 20 in the wild. Wow. We've got um, mum and dad and all of the other guys are their offspring. So we've got six babies and yeah, in the wild they can get up to 20 um, and they'll stay together roughly in the family group um, until either one of mum or dad dies and then the pack will split up, form their own groups and that helps to stop them inbreeding. That's great. Yeah. Um, so to stop that in here, um, dad is vasectomized and both the young males are castrated. But because they are all siblings, you can see they do squabble quite a bit. Yeah, they have a really nice family dynamic. So I believe that the Shepworth Wildlife Conservation Charity at one point did donate to and help out Forget Me Not, a charity that specifically supports the Asian small clawed otter. Forget Me Not, yes, I love that name. <laughs> um, unfortunately, one of the threats to these guys out in the wild is uh, for fur. Uh, sadly, people like to turn them into, you know, coats, hats, uh, and all that kind of thing. We think the fur looks much better on the otters. I would agree, yes. They yeah. do rather suit it, look quite dashing. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, um, that is an ongoing problem. With um, kind of increase in more recent years of synthetic furs, it's kind of dying out, which is really, really good. But we're also seeing an increase in other problems, like keeping them as pets. You were saying that's quite a bad issue in Asia. It is, yes. So 
Um, we see it quite a lot on social media. You might see videos of people having these guys in their houses, kind of just stroking them, playing with them. Um, and it's not really very good. They, A, they don't make very good pets. They're really noisy. Um, <laughs> they eat really smelly food and they do really, really smelly poo. <laughs> um, and also they need to be in family groups like this. People tend to just keep one on their own. They have really, really bad kind of um, mental problems from that. They get really stressed, really depressed, and it's not good. No. Um, so much better and much happier when they're here. They've got their friends. Absolutely. Or just out in the wild. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Somewhere they can be together. Absolutely. And what we want is happy otters. We do. <laughs> happy otters are good otters. All otters are good otters, though. Um, unfortunately, these guys are classed as vulnerable in the wild. So they do have a reasonable uh, population size, but it is decreasing slowly because of these problems like uh, the fur trade, pet trade, and also they're losing habitat through water pollution um, and growing infrastructure in the areas they're from, clearing uh, lakes and rivers and things for agriculture. So this has all been at Shepworth Wildlife Park, which has Shepworth Wildlife Conservation Charity. They raise money for their conservation efforts and also for their hedgehog hospital, which helps sick and injured hedgehogs. You can find out all the information about that in the description box below. And have you enjoyed this? Did you enjoy seeing, feeding them, all the animal facts? Just let us know what your favorite thing was below down in the comments.